What's up everyone, I'm Zach from Action VFX, and I'm back to talk more about EXR files. In the first tutorial, we covered how to properly set up EXR files in After Effects. Check that out if you haven't, because today, we're taking that setup and going more in depth with the different passes to create a variety of effects that can take your shot to the next level. Let's get started. So from the first tutorial, we've got our EXR explosion asset set up and ready to go. First, let's adjust the fire in the explosion to make it more photo real. I duplicate my explosion layer, select the fire mask channel and extractor, and then rename the layer. This render pass is a mat of just the fire. I add an adjustment layer under my fire mat layer, rename it, and set the track mat to luma mat. Now it is using the above layer as a mat for any adjustments that I make. Next, I'm going to add an exposure effect and set exposure to 1, then add a hue saturation effect and set master saturation to negative 10. This makes the fire a little blown out as it would be if we were filming the explosion for real. Next, I'm going to duplicate my fire mask layer, select the smoke mask channel and extractor, and rename the layer. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer under the smoke mask layer, rename it, and set the track mat to luma mat, just like the fire adjustment layer. Since I'm going to be making adjustments to match my explosion to the background, I need to go back to my main comp and lock the composition window so that I can see what is happening without jumping back and forth between the comps. Back in the explosion pre-comp, I add a lumetri color effect to the smoke adjustments layer and use the color wheels to push the highlights and midtones toward blue so that the smoke looks to be reflecting the sky just like it would in the real world. One major advantage of these EXRs is the ability to change the lighting. To do this, I duplicate my explosion layer, move the layer up, and rename it. I select the main light channel and extractor and change the layer's blending mode to screen. I can solo the layer on and off to see what the main light channel contains. It is easy to see this is the lighting on the upper right side of the explosion. I can use this, along with the other two lighting passes, to match the lighting of the explosion to the lighting in the scene. I know I need some additional lighting on the top right of the explosion, but not as much as what is currently being added. So I will bring the opacity of the main light layer down to 35. Now I duplicate my main light layer, select the fill light channel and extractor, and rename the layer. I solo the layer on and off to see what it contains. And then I set the opacity of the layer to 20. I then use a curves effect to add some green and match the bounce light that I would be getting off the trees and grass. I also have access to a rim light pass, but I don't think it is needed in this case. My favorite thing about these EXRs is that we can rebuild the explosion to only have smoke and no fire. This could be used for effects like mortar explosions, which typically don't have a noticeable amount of fire. To do this, I'm going to first duplicate the explosion composition, rename it, and replace the old explosion in the main comp. To get the best results and to have the most control over the final result, I'm going to work with the linear versions of the render passes and then convert them to sRGB at the end. I will delete all the layers except for the explosion and the explosion matte layers, and I'll also delete the color profile converter from the explosion layer. Now, I create a new adjustment layer, add the color profile converter to it, and check the linearize input profile checkbox. Now the conversion from linear to sRGB is happening last. I duplicate the explosion layer two times, rename the three layers to main light, fill light, and rim light, set the extractor effect to show their respective channels, and change their blending mode to add. I am using add instead of screen because I am working in a linear color space. Now I have an explosion with no fire. I also want to make some adjustments to the lighting and colors as I did for the first explosion. So I will add an exposure effect to the main light layer, set the exposure to 1, and check the bypass linear light conversion checkbox. This is because we are already working in a linear color space. I will also add a curves effect to this layer and push some more blue into these highlights to match the sky. 
Now I will add the same exposure and curves effects to the fill light layer, set the exposure to 0.3, check the bypass linear light conversion checkbox, and add some green with the curves. These small adjustments really help the explosion match the plate better. One last thing I need is motion blur. Typically, I would use something like the pixel motion blur effect, but these EXR files have an additional pass that gives me accurate motion blur and also faster render times. I will duplicate my main light layer, move it to the top, delete the exposure and curves effects, select the motion vector channel in extractor, and rename the layer to motion vectors. This crazy looking render pass is giving us information about the motion of the explosion. This information can be used to accurately apply motion blur to the explosion. To do this, I create a new adjustment layer, rename it, and apply the real smart motion blur effect. This effect is not one of the default effects that comes with After Effects, but I need it to utilize the motion vector pass. I set the effect to reference the motion vectors layer, with effects and masks, and then turn my motion vectors layer off. Then, I set the max distance to 20 to tone down the amount of motion blur. And that's going to be it for this tutorial on EXR passes. These same techniques can be used with other multi-channel EXR products from Action VFX, such as the Large Scale Smoke Plumes Volume 2 collection. And we have two brand new products with EXR passes releasing April 14th, so check those out. Subscribe so you're ready for all the new tutorials and content we have coming your way, and leave us a comment on what tutorial you want to see next. I'm Zach from ActionVFX.com.